Place your hand on your chest. Other people have testified. As you place your hand on your chest, I want you to declare that it is your turn. It is your turn. I you receive your deliverance in Jesus' name. <laughs> All chairs, watch out. Deliverance is beginning with somebody down there. Lord, bring that person out of that bondage. Terrible bondage. Initiation in the womb, from the womb. Receive your deliverance thoroughly. The spirit of untimely dead following somebody. Pack a load, pack a load. Come out, enter fire, enter fire. Or you leave that lady quickly. Spirit of untimely dead. All your property, pack it from that lady quickly. I'm still waiting for that person coming for the first time. That spirit of untimely dead catch fire. Come out of her, enter the bottom list. Come out quickly. Come out. Or just watch out. No matter how many, whatever that spirit may have damaged, let it catch fire. Catch fire. Whatever planted in your body, catch fire. Yes, that deliverance is taking place. Thorough deliverance going on. Whatever has entered your body in the dream, whatever they projected in your body, I command that to catch fire. Come out quickly. Come out. Quickly, quickly, pack your load, pack your load, pack your load. Spirit of death, enter fire. That person tormented by immoral spirit. Unclean spirits, immoral spirits, catch fire quickly, catch fire. I torment that spirit, I command, pack the load, come out. Spirit of immorality, unclean spirits, spirit of prostitution. Holy Ghost fire. Serpentine spirit. Python spirit. Catch fire, catch fire, catch. Every contrary spirit that is tormenting you, they will not escape today. Spirit of backwardness. Spirit of barrenness. Spirit husband. Queen of coast. Spirit wife. Of the marine spirit. Catch fire. All 
those voices that you are hearing, evil negative voices, I torment that spirit by fire. I command you, spirit, speaking from that altar, catch fire, come out. In the marine altar, evil kingdom, I command destruction, fire, fire. I command that voice to cease. Receive your deliverance in Jesus' name. Any shrine where they are taking your picture, your name, your image to, wherever they are projecting evil upon you, moving objects, a lot of cobwebs, internal hotness of the body, I command deliverance now. Deliverance, deliverance. Lord, give them thorough deliverance. Thorough, thorough, thorough. Wherever you are bound, wherever you are tied, wherever they are mentioning your name for evil, in the name of Jesus, I lose you. Please, lose, lose, lose. Whatever they tie your future, tie your progress, tie your marriage, tie you, tie your, your conception, I lose you, lose, lose. Wherever they are sitting on you, in the power, occult power, witchcraft power, I command it to be loose, be loose. <laughs> thorough, thorough deliverance. Thorough, de Lord, every plant my heavenly Father did not plant. Whatever you have not planned their body, their life, I command it to uproot it in Jesus' name. Spirit of infirmities, spirit of affliction, spirit of backwardness, I command to catch fire. Pack your load, pack your load. Spirit of sicknesses and diseases, every spirit of death, catch fire. Spirit of backwardness, catch fire. Come out, come out, come out of the body, quickly. In the name of Jesus, come out. Yes, deliverance is still going on there. Everybody, you must be delivered. He delivered Paul and Silas. He delivered Paul and Silas. Our God who delivered Paul and Silas. He will surely daily. Hallelujah. Oh, you deliver. Our God who deliver all and silence. He will surely daily. Hallelujah. Oh, you deliver Paul and Silas. Our God who deliver Paul and Silas, you will surely deliver. I want you to ask the Lord to deliver you now, now, now. Wherever you are, now. God that deliver Paul and Silas, deliver me. Deliver everybody pray. Deliver from every projection, enchantment, incantation, telepathy, every manipulation, receive your deliverance. Deliverance from every object, every cause, every spell, every evil arrow. Be free, be delivered, be liberated. Receive freedom from every evil projection, manipulation. Every enchantment to incantation, let it catch fire, be uprooted from you, uprooted from your marriage, uprooted from your family, uprooted from your career, receive deliverance. In Jesus' name we pray. There is power, there is power. There is power in the name of 
Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, deliverance power, freedom power in the name of Jesus. There is power, wonder walking power. There is power, deliverance power, wonder walking power in the name of Jesus. Father, I stand here by the authority in the name of Jesus. And I pray for as many who have cried to heaven for deliverance. Father, by authority, I declare deliverance to them in Jesus' name. Every initiation, every covenant with any known or unknown demon, initiation in the womb, Anyone tied with Astra, all the demon from Astra world, from Marine Kingdom, Witchcraft Kingdom, Father, those that tied, initiated in Python Kingdom, by the blood of Jesus, I cancel the initiation. I cancel the initiation. Father, by your authority, in the name of Jesus, I bring deliverance upon them. And I claim deliverance for everyone in Jesus' name. Wherever, whatever they have used for as a matter of instrument initiation, whatsoever they have used by the blood of Jesus, I nullify it. I nullify every deposit of your heads, every blood sacrifices every ring and every exchange everything given to you i nullify them by the blood of jesus whatever they have said over your life any exchange i nullify them by blood of jesus and i call for liberation and freedom receive your deliverance in jesus name all you contrary spirits oh yeah pack hello Quickly, quickly. I do not permit you in this place anymore. As I count three, come out of the body, enter the bottomless speed. Koko Sika Huka. The skin the lika peruski genia. Lost a Luvima Ruski Tena. As I count three, let there be liberation. Let there be freedom. Let those three come out. Enter the bottomless speed. One. Keep quiet. Don't pray. Don't pray. Don't pray. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. Wait for your deliverance now. Every known unknown demon, all evil spirit, unclean spirit, all ancestral spirit, marine spirit, python spirit, witchcraft spirit, I command you, pack your load. Come out and enter the bottomless spirit in Jesus' name. To In the name of Jesus, I bind you, I cast it up. In the name of Jesus, I bind you, I cast it up with spirit. I bind you, I cast it out in Jesus' name. Precious that day. It is written for this purpose the Son of God was manifested that they might destroy the works of the devil. Every works of the devil in their life. I command to be destroyed in Jesus' name. And I cancel that heart pain, be healed. I cancel that evil projection while you are sleeping. I cancel that projection in the dream in Jesus' name. 
that person the shot bullet in the night in the dream I cancel the infer and I command that five rods be uprooted in Jesus name and I cancel that evil fear every fear coming upon you that you are going to die that will happen I cancel that in Jesus name I command the hyena be uprooted I command that spell cast upon your eyes be uprooted in Jesus name my daddy he the sick whatever battle this person is going through take over give that person victory in Jesus name that typhoid fever malaria parasite be healed that HIV positive to one and two, I cancel be healed in Jesus' name. My daddy, I command that growth in the body of somebody disappear now, dry and vanish away in Jesus' name. And I pray for you, be connected to that favor in Jesus' name my daddy the broken marriage I cancel that evil I commanded to join together in Jesus name you strange woman in that marriage I command to pack and move away from that marriage Father intervene in Jesus name my daddy whatever this person have lost spiritually I command it to be restored Daddy, bless my people, bless my people. All I'm asking you in that place of work where somebody has been suspended. Father, I command them to assemble and recover that person from now to tomorrow in Jesus' name. Daddy, bless my people. Deliver my people. That person with heavy sorrow, I cancel that sorrow. Whatever is the cause of that sorrow, I command to be removed in Jesus' name. That as I speak your word, all I'm asking you, you will finish the word. You will finish the word. You will bring perfection in the head, in the spiritual life, in every area. You will bring perfection of your blessings upon your people. Father, do it for them in Jesus' name. I pass the decree that no one that step into this place shall go back the same. That they show somebody a sign. Keep quiet. Keep quiet. There is somebody here right now you need a sign lord wherever that person may be go and free that individual as a matter of sign keep quiet yes that sign has begun that high sign is going on it's going on perfect freedom before ever I preach the message, let that person be free. Yes, somebody just coming in right now, even right now into the church. That problem you brought now, I cancel it in Jesus' name. Wherever you are entering the church now, receive deliverance. Toro freedom. Toro, Toro. Aru, go back to the sender. Go, 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 go. I, I claim your freedom. I claim your miracle. I claim your blessings. And I release it to you in Jesus' name. 
Say amen to this prayer. Say it again. One more time. Shall we get seated? I want you to sing this song. With Jesus in our midst, nothing shall be possible. With Jesus in our midst, nothing shall be possible. With our God in our midst, nothing shall be impossible. With our God in our midst, nothing shall be impossible. With Holy Ghost in our midst, nothing shall be impossible. With Jesus in our midst, nothing shall be possible. Remember me, remember me, remember me, my Lord Jesus, remember me, Father. Father in heaven, Jehovah, God in heaven, remember me, my Lord Jesus, do it for me, do it for me. Do it for me, all the glory will be your own. Father, God in heaven, Father, the great provider, do it for me. Jehovah, upon Omega, He will do it for you in Jesus' name. Turn your Bible to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. I read verse 17. O oh, Jesus answered them, My father walketh hitherto, and I walk. Take it again. O oh, Jesus answered them, My father walketh hitherto, and I Walk in Romans chapter 9, verse 28. Romans chapter 9 and verse 28. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. In Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God which walketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And so, from these chapters and verses, I'm bringing to you the topic. And I'm talking to you on the topic, he will finish the world. Take it in this order. God will finish the work. I want to let you know today is a great day. 
there shall be perfection. If you believe it, say amen. amen. So take it again. God will finish the work. Do you agree with it? All right. Pay attention. Today is for you. So long as God has brought you to this program or to this church, he has begun a good work in you. Are you hearing me? A work of love. A work of perfection. And a demonstration of his goodness. A demonstration of his power. Something will happen here. He will surely finish the work he started. Are you hearing me? Nothing can hinder him. I don't know what you are passing through. I'm announcing to you again. God will finish the work. Yeah. Remember, if you are in need and someone took you to a place of solution, such person has proved that he, he or she loves you. And that is the beginning of your solution. I thank God who has brought you to this place this day. Are you hearing me? God who has brought you here today has started the good work. And he will surely finish it. Nothing, nothing. I've told you, no opposition, nothing. He will finish the work in your life. And you shall go home testify. He has brought you here. That's step one. And as long as you are here, I'm assuring you, the work is started in bringing you here, you will finish it. If you look at your Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 12. 1 Samuel chapter 3. I'm reading verse 12. Chapter 3, verse 12. Look at it. It says... For Samuel chapter 3, verse 12. I'm reading stanza B, and it reads, When I begin, I will also make an end. When God begins, he will finish it. God, who is brought to here, has started. He has begun the work. And I'm assuring you, that shall be total freedom. That shall be perfection. And nothing can oppose him. In Isaiah chapter 43, I read from verse 10. Isaiah 43. Look at your Bible. 43. And from verse 10. And I read Isaiah 43. Verse 10. It reads. Take note. Ye are my witnesses, says the Lord. Am I someone whom I have chosen? That you may know and believe me. And understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed. Neither shall there be after me. I, even I, I am the Lord. And beside me there is no Savior. I have declared, I have saved, I have showed. When there was no strange God among you, therefore ye are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Verse 13, yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will walk, and who shall let it? God will walk, who will hinder it? Who will revise it? Who will stop him? I want to let you know, God who brought you here today as a demonstration of his love and goodness. And uh, I want you to understand, and as a sign that he has started the work, today that problem that you brought here will never survive today. Whether you believe it or not, 
whether you are doubting it, I want to let you know, as long as I'm here, I want you to take note. My faith is greater than your doubt. Whatever I say concerning you, whether you believe it or not, because I believe it must surely come to pass. Therefore, I put it to you, God will finish the work. In every area of your life, that problem that nobody could be able to give you answer, he has the answer. Nobody was able to give you solution. Solution is coming your way. All these years you have gone here and there, and it appears there's no more hope. Hope is coming your way. Today is your day. I will walk. I will walk. The Lord said, Who shall let it? Please tell me who. So that problem you brought here will never follow you home. I say it will never follow you home in Jesus' name. You are going home with testimonies. So, which I consider this message under the flowing subheadings. One, the reasons. Two, examples. And the problem explained. Two, our expected response, intervention, and the benefit. Let's go to point number one. The reasons, example, and problem explained. Everyone should understand that God loves us. In fact, he loves you. Are you hearing me? God loves you. He loves human beings. So much that he sent our Lord Jesus Christ who came and died for me and for you, for the whole world and shed his precious blood for us at the cross of Calvary. I want to understand that is a demonstration of love, even while we are still sinners. Even while we are still in our ignorance, when we don't know him, the Lord came and demonstrated his great love and died for me and for you. Isn't that love? Answer me. That the Lord came to die for you and for me, who are who were sinners. And the Bible made us understand in the book of, uh, you know, John chapter 3, verse 16, he said, For God, look at this, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth he should not perish, but have everlasting life. I want to let you know, God has demonstrated his great love to us, even while we are yet sinners. And that is to all the people. In fact, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible says, For all have seen and come short of the glory of God. Because of sin, that man and the first woman lost all the divine nature, the glory of God. All the attendant blessings disappear because of sin. And God, in his infinite mercy, started looking for us. You know, to, as the demonstration of love and his good work towards us, he sent his only begotten son to die for me and for you, so that we might be saved. And I said that was even while we are yet sinners. Look at Romans chapter 5. I read Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God commended his love towards us. In that while we are yet sinners, what happened? Christ died for us. Why we are yet sinners? Why we don't know him? Why we are enemies? Why we are disobedient? Christ died for us. He still demonstrated his love. His goodness toward us. He came looking for me and for you in order to bring us back to God. That's a demonstration of what? Great love. So, if he gave us his only begotten son, our Lord Jesus Christ, there is nothing he can withhold from us. 
And there is nothing God cannot do for us if he did not spare his only son and gave his own son Jesus to die for me and for you so that none of us will die in spiritual death, none of us will go to hell fire, so that all of us will be saved. That is a great love. And that is a great work that God has started. I'm sure you go will finish that work. Do you believe it? If you look at Romans chapter 8, verse start 1, Romans chapter 8, please open your Bible. It says, Romans chapter 8 and verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Look at verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? That means, if God will give us Jesus Christ, what is it that God cannot give us? Tell me. My friend, I want to let you know he will finish the work. <laughs> Do you agree with me? If God did not withhold Jesus Christ, he will not withhold healing deliverance, a blessings, or miracles, or whatsoever you are looking for. My friend, his son Jesus is much more than that thing. And he is only his begotten son. He gave him to die for me and for you. My friend, he will give you deliverance. He will give you healing. He will give you blessings. He will give you heart desires in this program today. In fact, he will finish the work. I don't know what they are passing through. He that did not withhold his only son and gave him to us free of charge to die to save me and to save you that we are sinners and to bring us the blessings of God that is not taken withhold from us. He see you from today. You begin to see the goodness of God in your life. I am very sure, very definite. After I say, in fact, while I'm still talking here, God will reveal himself to you. And you will test and see that the Lord is good. Can somebody say amen? So get ready because today is your day. It's the beginning of a new era and a new time. It's see you, the people that saw you while you are coming here, while you are going, they will not recognize you. They will see the glory of God, the power of God, the presence of God, and they will say, where did you go? That will be the response, will be the question. Where did you go? Now, let me give you a testimony. Somebody said when he was coming here, he couldn't walk, and he didn't help. And he managed to come and he looked haggard as if he was mad. But when he stepped in here, he had a voice that as long as I entered here, the matter is over. That lost the battle. And then when I began to speak, and the, the woman got herself completely while they were going, it's even the one I was saying, Don't look, watch, mother is coming. And he's now walking smartly and joyfully. See you today, you will go smartly and joyfully. He see you today, every people holding you in the hand. Before you leave here, you'll be just talking to them and, you know, and even try to hold them and help them. My friend, he see you. The yoke must break in your life. You will go home perfectly well. How many of you believe? I want to put it to you. God has started the work. As long as he brought you here, he will give you her desires. I am very definite. And Lord Jesus made it clear that he came for us all because of his love. In Luke chapter 19 verse 10, look at it. Luke chapter 19, I read verse 10. He came for me and for you. And I want you to take note that today the purpose of his coming must be accomplished. Luke chapter 19, 19. 
and verse 10. I read Luke 19. Reading verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Oh, he came to look for those who were lost. Praise the Lord. I want to let you know, if you are lost in sin, if you are lost in the world, today is the day of recovery. A day of salvation. If you have been captured by the enemy and in prison, by the devil today is a day of deliverance and salvation. I don't know what they have afflicted you with. I don't know the evil work the devil has done. Maybe you are destroyed, you are stolen, you are killed, and you know you are just left half naked and nothing is there anymore. My friends, something good will come your way. Because Jesus came for a rescue operation, total recovery. He see you. You must be saved. You must be delivered. You must be blessed. My Bible made me to understand that, um, you know, in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief cometh not, but for to keep to steal and to destroy. The devil has done a lot of havoc in your family, in your marriage, in your head, even in your career. The devil has done a lot of havoc. You know, carry out this assignment to keep to steal and to destroy. And you know, you are left with a you know with sorrow, with suffering, with pain. And here you are, and you are going to many places, no remedy. And here you are today. My friend, if you just had an announcement that the thief come to keep to steal and destroy, and you stop there, it is incomplete announcement. I want to let you know. There is need for us to complete that verse. He said, I am come that they might have life. I have it more abundantly. He see you today. Abundance of life shall be your portion. Internal life. Internal life shall be your portion. He see you today. Salvation shall be your portion. He see you today. Whatever the devil, the agent has stolen from you shall be restored in Jesus' name. He see you today, that battle you are going through and people are mocking you and people are looking at you as somebody that is defeated in life. God will defeat your enemies. You see you, whatsoever they have said concerning your situation. My friend, God has the final say. I don't know what you are going through. He see you, you will never go back in sorrow. You are going back in victory. You are going back with deliverance. You are going back with, uh, with testimonies. In fact, listen to me. You are going home with laughter. Is it possible? Are you asking me why? The Bible said for this purpose. <laughs> that's your problem. That's why Jesus came. And he said, for this, according to 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, and stands up, he said, for this purpose, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. He see you, every works of the devil in your life is condemned. Every works of the devil in your life is canceled. Every works of the devil in your family shall be destroyed. In fact, today, the Lord will finish the work in Jesus' name. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And if the Son therefore shall make you free, what do you think will happen? <laughs> I see somebody totally free. And that person I saw is you. Totally, 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 totally. And you will go home with blessings today in Jesus' name. And so, don't lose hope. I want to put it to you, there is hope for you. Sister, there is hope for you. My brother that is there, there is hope for you. I say there is hope for you. 
There is no point of weeping or crying. I want to take note while he was physically here, talking about our Savior, our Lord, our Master Jesus Christ. While he was here on his earthly ministry to seek and to serve the Lord, you know what he did? He went everywhere doing good. Praise the Lord. And the, whoever he came across, he did good to them. He did good to the oppressed. He did good to the afflicted. He did good to the widow. He did good to the rich. He did good to the poor. He did good to those that are bound and possessed by the devil. He set them free. And in fact, he did good to the multitude. He provided for them and they ate and had enough. What a great God. And they sang, Jesus went about doing. He went about. He went about. Jesus went about. He went about. Jesus went about. He went about. Jesus went about. He went about doing. He went about. Jesus went about, he went about, Jesus went about, he went about, he went about. Today, today, he is still going about doing good. And it is your turn. He see you. <laughs> he will do you good. And you are situation that people have been asking you, where is your God? That situation will be changed today. You are situation that people are mocking your Christianity. Today, those people will see you and they will ask you, where did you go? Do you hear me? That situation that people are laughing at you, making mockery, kajo, despising you, reading you off in the family. They don't consult you again. After today, my friend, they can't conclude in that family without you. He that went about doing good is here for you. And as it touches you, the yoke will break. As it touches you, there shall be transformation. As it touches you, honestly, there shall be testimonies. Look at Acts chapter 10, Acts of Apostles chapter 10. I read verse 38. As chapter 10, reading verse 38, and the Bible said, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Oh, he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. And he went about doing what? Doing good, healing the oppressed. He see you. He will do you good. He will heal you. He will heal you so spirit and body, every area. And you will testify in Jesus' name. So get ready. I don't know the area that you are, you know, it's you, are, you know, lacking the goodness of God in your life. 
Today he will meet you there. I don't know. We are saying where is the goodness of God? You want to see that we are hearing that God is good. You want to see it in this area or that area or that area. My friend, that area, the Lord will not make mistake today. That very area, the Lord will visit you. Remember, he is God. He cannot make a mistake. He sees you that he's crying and weeping. He sees you that thinking that the whole world has gone against you. He sees you that he's in depths. He sees you that nothing, 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 nothing to write home again. He sees you that every road closed, door closed. The Lord will touch you, the door will open again. He sees you. Honestly, even though you are saying nothing, nothing, the Lord is the God of abundance. In this program, he will appear in his abundance nature. And he shall supply. I say God shall supply. All your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He see you. He that brought you here. <laughs> you need to congratulate if it's human being that say come. I said it today, God who allowed that person to give invitation and you respond. He has started the work. And as long as you're here today, he will finish the work. <laughs> Do you believe it? Well, I am very sure about it. It must happen. So, our God is here for the same business of doing good. Healing the oppressed, providing for the poor, meeting the need of all his people. So, he will do you good. <laughs> My sister, he will do you good. You know, that doesn't sleep again in the night because of problem of this life. You don't even know what is actually keeping you awake. Today, you will sleep like a baby. He will do you good. You know, that people hated you for nothing. Even when you are trying to come close to them and make them friends, they are running away from you. Today, the Lord will give you favor in the sight of man. He see you. And even when you are walking on the road, cobwebs will cover your face. Even in the house, cobwebs will cover your face. You enter church, cobwebs cover your face. All the arrow of cobwebs, all the arrow. They are, you know, projecting to make sure that nothing works for you. That no favor, nobody will have something to do with you. As I'm standing here, it will go back to the center. All those that are monitoring you, monitor you wherever you go. And they are just using their cup wells and they cover your face. My friend, today their kingdom shall be destroyed. I don't know what they are stolen from you in the dream. And sometimes they appear and they you know, make you a friend in the dream and collected your money. Or I said, Give me money. You gave them money, not knowing they're taking everything from you. Sometimes they appear in the dream and then before you know they have collected your shoes. Sometimes they appear, they collected their clothes. Sometimes they appear, they, so you know, they projected nakedness, nothing again. They make you barren. Sometimes they appear in the dream, and then they collected your car, where you pack it. They collected what you have, and they'll be collecting, 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 collecting. In the name of Jesus, I return thunder to them. Fire to them. Everything collected, I command them to return it back to you in Jesus' name. It see you. All whatever they have done in subconsciousness, in while you are sleeping and dreaming, whatsoever they have done, my friend, it shall not prosper. For those says the Lord. 
It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. Are you hearing me? All the activities of the devil and demon and human agent, it shall not come to pass. It shall not stand for you. It must go back to the sender in Jesus' name. For thus says the Lord, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And because it is written, every plant, my heavenly Father did not plant your life, shall be rooted up. In the name of you, I root up everything projected in you, I return it back to sender. And because it is written that the Lord shall restore all the years, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, the canker worm, the locusts are eating. Today, everything eating, taken from you, I command them to restore. He will finish the work. I don't know who is standing and said, come and pass. Let me see. I don't know who is saying, come and make it, let me see. I don't know who is saying, as long as he's alive, as long as he's there, that you will never have your way. My friend, who is he that said, and it cometh to pass? When the Lord has not commanded it. Now, listen to me. God will bring the counsel of the hidden to naught. And the counsel of the Lord. That shall stand. Are you hearing me? He see you. He see you. You are having victory over there. Not tomorrow, but from now, 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 now. The Lord said, the Lord said, it is written that who will set tongues and barriers before me, before God. Who will set tongues and barriers before God? He said, I will walk through them and burn them with fire. You see the tongues, the trap that's setting on you, all that are setting on your way so that you will not make, you will make your way. My friend, God will walk through them and burn them with fire. Let me ask you this question. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for you, who can be against you? Who, 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 who? He see you. Beginning from today, you will possess your position. That God that did them good, through our Savior, going about doing good, healing the oppressed, I want to let you know that today he is here. He is here. And why he has brought you here is to do you good. That's why you brought you here today. Definitely he will do you good. Yes, yes, he will do you good. He's, a, he's a unquestionable, unchallengeable, unchallengeable God. You don't challenge, you don't dare him. The God I'm talking about, you don't dare him. He doesn't say, who are you? He will teach you unforgettable lessons. He's Baba, Baba, Baba. He's the God of the chosen, Baba Ijecha. He will deal with the situation. He will give you victory. Yes, he is a victor, is a victorious God. He's a is a winner all the time. He will win in any battle against any split, any kingdom, any power. He will teach them lessons. He see you. Victory is coming your way. I don't know who is trying to rubbish you or rubbish choosing people. Don't worry. Don't fight. Don't retaliate. Don't make any enemy. Make everybody friend. Are you hearing me? Don't fight. Don't retaliate. Don't just make everybody what? Friend. Now, anybody who wants to now try to do anything against you, he will know that your pastor is serving the living God.
as long as you are concerned, all of you are touched not. So you need to rejoice. Yes, you have everything to rejoice. Yes, because I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. The Son of God is my friend. I'm so happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. The Son of God is my friend. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. The Son of God is my friend. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. The Son of God is my friend. Are you happy? I'm happy. I'm happy. The Son of God is my friend. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. The Son of God. Is yes. Yes. You are here. This is Lazarus. This is the friend of Jesus. Are you hearing me? You are protected. Can I hear you say amen? You have nothing to worry. We are choosing people. Amen. Smile, Jesus loves you. I say smile, Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. Oh. I am smiling, Jesus. I say, smile, Jesus loves you. Brethren, smile, Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. Oh. I am smiling, Jesus loves you. I say, smile, Jesus loves you. Brethren, my Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. Oh. I am smiling. Jesus loves me. I say, smile. Jesus loves you. Sister, smile. Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. Oh. I am smiling, Jesus. Yes, he loves us. He has brought to where he is, where he is doing good to people. He will do you good. <laughs> Sit down. I want to let you know there was somebody who wanted to spoil the joy of my people on the main road. And then he brought Koboko. He brought Beth. And he was coming before a chosen. And he's not afraid. <laughs> Brethren, can you imagine? And he, and he came, I will slap you. He was not afraid. And he said, I am a chosen. I am a chosen. I am a chosen. You cannot do that. And the man said, he's, he's unchurched. He's unchurched. What does that mean? Does the church know anywhere? Does he know what? Does the, the church have a record in heaven? The church, his church, his church. He's an authority man. Can you imagine? And then a junior and a young man appear from nowhere without the uniform. So, young man, move. Praise the Lord. He was in full uniform as an officer and he was challenging a chosen. And he was mentioned the words, he was mentioning his church that have no record anyway. Praise the Lord. And then a small boy appeared, junior than two of them. And he came and said, Move. Say, Who are you? Say, I'm a. I'm a I am a officer and a superior to you. 
Praise the Lord. And he said, how can you uh, show me? And he said, are you asking your senior identity card? Your spirit. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See. Young man, move. Brethren, listen to me. <laughs> Do you know where you are? <laughs> In the palace of the great king. And where the world of the king is, there is power. And who may ask him, what doest thou? He see you. From today, that great and good work shall be finished in your life. He has done it before. He went about doing good. So get ready. He has done it to so many people in time past. It is your turn. In the Bible, in the present day, God has done it. He has done great work. Delivering people from all kinds of problems. My friend, look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 30. Matthew chapter 15, reading verse 30. I read chapter 15 and verse 30. Remember, he went about doing good. And great more to, to come came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, men, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet. What happened? He healed them without wasting time. No too much talk. He healed them. Look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 15. 12, verse 15. Look at your Bible. Chapter 12, verse 15. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitude to followed him. What happened? And he healed them all. How many? In Matthew chapter 14, verse 14. Matthew 14, and reading verse 14. He has done it before. He went about doing good. 14, verse 14. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them. And he healed their sick. Now, in Matthew chapter 19, verse 2. Matthew chapter 19, reading verse 2. I don't know what you are going through. The Lord has done many things before. 19 verse 2. And great mortal followed him, and he healed them there. My friend, he see you, you will be healed. You will be delivered. You will be blessed. The Lord will meet all your need here today in Jesus' name. Are you getting ready? I don't know what you are going through. In fact, this day is for you. I said this day. Which day? You can never leave your office to be here in vain. You can never leave your house to be here in vain. My friend, he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. For you, you must go home with testimony. Whether you believe it or not. That's when there are some scriptures here. I'm not reading again. Let's move forward. I don't know what you are going through. I see you. The Lord is here for you. 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 So he has done it in the life of many people in the Old and New Testament. He has done it in this place. In fact, so many people that have testified in a miss, he did it for them. Am I right? He will do it for you. He will do you good. No matter your problem spiritually, no matter your problem physically, 
or materially or financially or academically no matter your problem I want you to understand that the Lord will touch you and he will transform you he will deliver you maybe you are sick this is the day of healing or maybe you are poor the Lord was made poor that you might be rich today he will make you rich maybe you are barren today there shall be no barren woman among us the yoke of barrenness shall be broken in your life the Lord has done it before he will do it again maybe you are having delay in marriage my friend I don't know just picture your husband so that when I'm going to pray collect your husband because today the yoke of delay in marriage shall be broken maybe you have unemployment my friend choose where you want to work and then when I'm going to pray just take your employment or maybe the promotion is not there my friend when do you want to be promoted the Lord will promote you I don't know the battle you are going through my friend that battle is not yours the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace in Jesus name I do not know the trouble in your family. When they step into your family, there shall be peace. There shall be progress. There shall be unity. The battle shall be over. Can I hear you say amen? I don't know who has taken over your marriage and they're telling you that you know you are just carrying bible it's not you to, uh, the owner of your marriage the lord will throw her away can i hear you say amen are you getting ready <laughs> today is your day i'm very sure i said all the people are afflicted or pressed those are nothing worse for you. Put hands there nowhere, hands there nowhere, left, right, back, nowhere, front, back, nowhere, and they are just stagnant in life. And people are wondering what is happening to you. My friend, he will do you good. When the Lord touches you, you will move faster. People will see your progress. He see you. Let me put it on your head. You will make progress in life. Let me put it on your, on your head again. You will succeed. The Lord will make a way where there is no way for you. My friend, don't lose hope. Did you hear me? As long as the Lord is concerned, there is always hope for you. Today, today is the beginning of a new era in your very life and when he begin he will make an end are you getting ready now so look at that your problem for the last time i say look at that problem for what last time enemies on every side the lord will silence your enemies look at them for the last time the assurance and giving to you he will finish the world in romans chapter 9 verse 28 romans chapter 9 verse 28 i read for he will finish the work oh that's the beautiful information to you that only good god who brought you here today who has started a work and bring you to a place of solution is telling you he will I, I, I didn't hear you he will finish the work I don't know where they have initiated you maybe in the womb maybe by your forefathers maybe the family have been under course maybe you know, marrying people you know, they, they gave them coins and gave them money, gave them minera, and that was all. You had, since then, you have been in trouble. My friend, that cause placed upon your generation, the Lord will deliver you. The initiation into marine world by Fanta, by coins, by your forefathers, whatever that, that all the generations have been suffering. Today, that yoke must be destroyed. 
you must be delivered in Jesus name look at it again he will <laughs> look at it <laughs> look at it properly well chapter 9 and verse 28 for he will when he said let there be light was there light where are devil why couldn't they stop the light he said let there be light what followed now I say today there shall be deliverance freedom blessings restoration healing prosperity favor you will finish that takes to point number two our expected response intervention and the benefits no matter the problem or how long it has lasted or who may have attended to it or what they may have said there is nothing to fear about there is nothing to worry it is the voice of man are you hearing me that thing God will bring it or not but the counsel of the Lord that shall stand are you hearing me I don't know what you are going through I don't know what the doctor, the native doctor, evil personality, false prophet, what they have said. I don't know what they, they may say. Ah, this thing is incurable. It's a lie. You will be cured in this place. They say, ah, you can never win this case. The Lord will give you victory in that court. They say, ah, that in fact you will not conceive again that's a lie <laughs> you are going to hear the you know the cry of bouncing baby boys and girls <laughs> you don't hear me they say, ah, you are entering menopause what is menopause didn't you hear the woman that gave testimony last month 31 years of barrenness she has entered menopause for six years but when the Lord decided here then he went there and brought the womb and put it in order and then make her to conceive that's the God I'm talking about. He see you. They say, ah, you have hunchback and you can never use your body again. Didn't you hear last month? How two women of 45 years, hunchback, hunchback, and they were this size and they were, you know, bending. When we say hunchback, leave the body and the hunchback make noise and left their body. Two of them were free from hunchback after 45 years. My friend, what is that growth? You know, you had a woman of 18 years of leg poison. And we said, we give you three days, you will not see it again. Three days, it disappeared. The leg became normal. And, of course, she came from a very good church. Listen to me today. I don't know what they have said. And you say, you have a dwarf. A dwarf cannot grow again. Have you not heard that a dwarf was brought here? And we pray, the dwarf started growing. And they get to the age, you know, of course, is the, is the son of a pastor here was a, a dwarf when they came prayer was made he may be here now he's very tall are you saying that ah you have imbecile or a monster didn't you hear that those that were born with tail here tail like monkey and animal face that when we pray here the body change you become a human being he see you today he see you that problem you brought here whatever they have said is a lie God have the final say. I remember what happened in Ugeli Crusade. In fact, God did a lot of great work. Where the texts of people were missing. I remember one of the small boys that the texts had been missing for a long time, for years. After prayer, he told mommy he wants to go and urinate. Lo and behold, the text is returned back. The whole system returned back. What do I could not do? And then they were coming one by one, many of them. Listen to me. He see you. He that brought you here have started the good work. For the fact you are here, <laughs> he will finish the work. 
are you a drug addict? Are you among those people that have terrible habits, afflicted with demonic possession or demonic habits of smoking ham, of homosexual? God has delivered many people, lesbianism, of prostitution. He will deliver you here. It's God. Unto him every knee shall bow. Your problem must bow. If you believe it, say amen. As long as you are here, your problem is condemned. <laughs> it's judged and condemned. It must go. It is what? A must. A must. A must. No matter the trouble, the war, the fighting, there is nothing to worry about or fear. If you look at the Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 29. Deuteronomy chapter 1. I read verse 29. Then I said unto you, Dread not, neither be afraid of them, the Lord your God, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you. He see you today. This God that brought you here, he will fight for you. Don't be afraid. In Exodus chapter 14, Exodus chapter 14, Exodus chapter 14. I read verse 13. I don't know who is pursuing you. He will pursue you to destruction. To his or that spirit, that kingdom, they will pursue you to their destruction in Jesus' name. Look at Exodus chapter 14 verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which we show to you today. For the Egyptians who you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. I put it on you. That problem you see today that follow you into this place, you will see it no more forever. Look at verse 14. The enemy that's after you, you will see them no more again forever. Verse 14, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. He see you, he's taking over your battle. Remember, he has started the work of bringing you, he has started the work by bringing you to this place and he will finish the work. I say he will finish it. He has the power, does he? Sisters and brother, does he have power? Of course, is the abundance of power is full of power. If you see power, hands and feet, that is God. So he's not in want of effort. He's the one that gave everything power to exist. Praise the Lord. Therefore, today he will step into a situation. Every borrowed power from him will bow. I am very, very sure. Isio, my friend, I've told you, I don't want to, let me just stop you. Isio, mark that problem, it is over. I've told you, he has the power, he has the resources. God is the omnipotent God. Out of him, everything came into existence. He has the resources. Do you hear me? He will meet all your needs. He will supply all your needs. Psalm 24 verse 1 says, The earth is of the Lord, and the fullness thereof. True or false? Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Psalm, 60, Psalm 62 verse 11 says, God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this. The power belongeth unto God. He owns the power. Praise the Lord. So we must believe him. We must believe him. If he said he will finish the work, believe him, he will finish the work. He has the resource, has the power. He has whatever it takes to meet all your needs. Nobody can question him. Nobody can defeat him. Nobody can hinder him. 
So, I don't know what they are passing through. We must believe that he will finish the work. And they ask him, as we're going to pray, ask him what you want him to do. My friend, he will answer your prayers. If you look at Mark, Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Mark chapter 9, read verse 23, and I read chapter 9, verse 23. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. How many things? All things are possible to him that believe. Can you believe? Will you believe? How many things are possible? So don't limit him. Don't limit him to a man. He can give, he can do all things. In Luke chapter 1, verse 37, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. So he will surely finish the work. According to Romans 9, verse 28, he will finish the work. Of course, he blessed Abraham in all things as a matter of intervention. He gave him children. He gave him all things. He see you. God will give you more than you are need. More than you are going to ask today, the Lord will do it for you. He did it for Abraham. He blessed him with Isaac. Even after so many years of barrenness, he put laughter in the mouth. He gave Abraham, according to Genesis 24 verse 1, God bless him in all things. And here we have invitation in Luke chapter 14 verse 17. He said, come, all things are now ready. And I'm calling you now, come to the Father through Jesus Christ. All things are now ready. What I'm looking for, Jesus said it is finished. He has paid the price for you. What you need to do is to claim it, to take it. He said, it is finished. You don't need to struggle. You don't need to suffer. Do you hear me? You don't need to suffer for what Jesus suffered for. You don't need to struggle for what Jesus struggled for. He has paid the price. He has finished the struggle, the suffering. He has paid the price. What you need to do is take what belongs to you. I don't know whether your heart last sister. He said, eh, whenever you look at the television or cable, other pastors will just be struggling and jumping up and down and then talking as if though they'll bring that. They will just jump around, jump around, jump around, jump around. What the sister was saying. And then when he came to the pastor, he said, Pastor, will just be talking, you know. A small, small, gentle, he's not moving around. He just, he, of course, I don't know whether he had him. And he said, Which camp pastor is this? Eh? He will just, you know, tune it and move on. He said, He will look for those who are strong, jumping up. He said, Look at them. He said, Look at them, look at them, man. Look at them. My friend, listen to me. Your God is on Heston. Your God is a gentle God. Are you hearing me? Your God goes by gentle voice. Praise the Lord. I remember when Elijah was waiting to hear from God. A lot of noise came. The Lord was not there. A lot of this, the Lord was not there. Until it's this small voice. And that was all. Now listen to me. We, I don't need to struggle and jump or even jump just out of excitement but my friend as for the power of God he has given it to us he has finished everything to us what we need to do is to do what? take what belongs to us without struggle he see you you are going home with miracle so those that believed he visited them in time past, intervened. And that was the end of their problem. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 21, verse 1. Let's see. Genesis 
21 and verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in, her, in his old age. And at the same time of which God has spoken to him. That was the end. When God said, I'm going to bless you with the seed of your own bowels. That time did not pass. God bring, brought it to pass. I said that very time came to pass. He see you. This is the appointed time for you. He will finish the work. When God told the Israelites, I'm bringing you out. After 430 years, that day did not pass. God did exactly as he promised. You, God will intervene today. And you will go home with testimonies. It's a day of intervention. And everybody here, get ready. I say what? Get ready for the Lord's intervention. When the Lord intervenes, the benefit will be seen. You will see your miracle. You will see your healing. You will see your prosperity. You will see your blessings. Today, you are going home with your miracle. For the Lord is said to intervene. In the book of John chapter 14, verse 13. What are you going to do now? 14 and verse 13. Chapter 14, verse 13. I read. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you ask anything in my name, what happened? Anything. Anything. As long as it's according to the will of God. Anything in my name, I will do it. See you. God will bless you. God will save you. God will sanctify you. God will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. With all the fruit and gift of the Spirit. God will fight for you. God will heal you. God will promote you. He will give you husband and wife and children. He will give you employment and promotion. God will visit you. He will see you. I want to hear your testimony. Whose testimony will follow? Everybody. Now, when I'm going to pray, as soon as I say amen to your case, my friend, it is amen in heaven. Do you hear me? Because not just saying I, I agree. And whatever you have asked is already done. My friend, nothing can dispute it. Whatever I'm going to pray for you today and say amen is already done. What is there for you is to do what? Take it and go home. Return back with what? I didn't hear you very well. So, let me put it to you before I begin to conclude. He will... Uh, he has no record of abandoned projects. It's not a man that says, ah, he's building this house. He has no part of completed. No. He has everything to finish what he started. Therefore, you, that problem you brought here today, he will finish the work. You must testify. That sickness can never kill you. Say amen to that. That battle you are going through at the hand of the enemy, my friend, listen to me now. That battle from the hand of witches and wizards, evil kingdom, occult kingdom, it is for God to advertise his power. The Lord hear me? Is it God allow it so that he will advertise his power? I don't know what they're going through now. And then people say, oh, sorry, sorry, it's a lie. My friend, God allowed that situation to do what? Advertise his power to prove that he is the owner of power, that he has power. So, when the Lord deal with that 
when he will deal with those enemies. And I'm telling you today, people will say God is the Almighty, is all powerful. When God will deal with your situation, and today, today is the day. He will deal with that situation. And those who doesn't believe in God, who doesn't know that is power, that God has power, they will know that God has power. So, your problem is for what? I didn't hear you again. Your problem is for advertisement. Advertisement for the power of God, the name of the Lord. So, your problem is nothing. Nothing. Something that prepare for what? Uh -uh. Are you feeling cold? Listen to me now. God said, for this same purpose, I have raised Pharaoh up. So that I will declare my name, which I've been known throughout the whole earth. As I destroy Pharaoh, people will know that nobody can challenge God. So that Pharaoh in your life, God will raise them to declare his power. To advertise his power. And so that people shall know the name of the Lord, that he has no rivalry. Can I hear you say amen? So I am rounding up now. All I want you to understand today is the day of perfection. It will finish. So for sinners and backsliders who are here, they should repent. They should confess their sins to the Lord and ask for mercy. They should promise God that they will never continue in the evil. They must believe that Jesus died for them. Shed his precious blood for them at the cross of Calvary, and was buried on the third day. He rose again for their justification. They must believe it. He rose again for our justification. And then we must wake on Jesus in our heart. Reject the devil, reject his work. And I'm assuring you, your name shall be canceled in the book of death. I'm reading the book of life. There is something you should understand. There are people that are mixing things up. The Bible said, a Christian is not a sinner. And a sinner is not a Christian. So you should examine your life. Are you claiming to be a Christian and you're living in sin? That is mixing things up. You must repent and promise God no more. Remember, the Bible said in Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. People are saying we are in time of grace. Yes, of course. But grace is not a license to sin. Romans chapter 6 verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How much are we that are dead to sin live any longer diary? So, grace is not a license to what? To sin. Once you receive Christ, you stop sinning. The grace is there to help you to stop sinning. The Bible said in Exodus, I mean, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 4, it said, The soul that sinned shall die. So we must not continue in sin because sin will separate one from God. Because it's not of God. In 1 John, chapter 3, verse 8, 1 John, let's read. Chapter 3, verse 8. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that they might destroy the works of the devil. Look at it. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, but is still remaining to him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Look at verse 10. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God. So it's very clear. A sinner is not a Christian, and a Christian is not a sinner. If you look at 1 John chapter 5, 
Verse 17. What is sin? Anything that is not righteousness. Verse 17. He said, all unrighteousness is sin. And what are they? Unbelief. Unforgiveness. Selfishness. Anger. Lying. Pride. Contention. Strife. Keeping malice. Bearing grudge. Bitterness. And lusting after evil things. Covetousness. Love of money. Love of the world. We must confess them and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I will never continue in them anymore. I want to remind you that disobedience is sin. Deceit is sin. And blasphemy is a terrible sin. Insincerity. Unfaithfulness. Lying. These are terrible sin. We need to confess them and reject them. I want to understand that backbiting, speaking evil of other people, is a terrible sin. You need to confess and say, Lord, no more. Murmuring is sin because sin people, swearing with heaven and earth, worshiping idol, making idol, having idol in your heart. Renounce them today and promise God no more. I don't know the wickedness I into. Are you among those people going to native doctors to make sure for divination, for pan reading? Repent and promise God no more. Are you among those people that you belong to secret court, open court? Marine court, local court, international court, campus court, anything courtism is satanic, is of the devil. Confess them and say, Lord, I am sorry. God let their property, burn them, have nothing to do with them anymore. I mean your ways. Now is acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. When you hear this word, hardly love your heart. As in the day of provocation in the wilderness, when the Israelites had in their heart, God killed them 23,000 one day. As you hear the word of God, repent and renounce the evil. I mean, you are ways. I want to remind you all those people that are into stealing, picking pockets, arm robbery, those that are into burglary, broke home of people, or chose to collect their goods. Who those involved with one chance, my friend repent. Or into fraud, do blind people, white people, or government, you a dupe, you steal from people, you steal from government, repent. And say, Lord, I'm sorry, I will do it no more. And please don't say, I'm bringing the money to church. We don't need your money. If there is a money you defrauded, you rob people, please, we don't need it in this church. Don't give us an offering. Don't give us of anything. I mean, you are with. I don't know the wickedness you are into. Search your life. Be sorry of your past life. Ask God for mercy. That all this evil, you will do them no more. Are you among those people? Are you into masturbation? Or are you into fornication, adultery? These are gross wickedness against God, against humanity. I mean to homosexual lesbianism. This is abomination before God. I mean you are ways. Are you into prostitution? Are you patronizing the prostitute? This is wickedness. Evil. You must not do it anymore. I mean you are ways. Sexual life. Are you into abortion? Are you encouraging abortion? Are you having them to take the drug to commit it? Repent. Abortion is murder. And no murderer has inheritance in the kingdom of God. I mean, there are ways. Are you among those that are into hired assassin, ritual killing? Are you among them? Into terrorism? Into kidnapping and killing? 
repent. I mean, there were, please, we don't need your money if I'm involved in these things. I mean, you are ways. That's what it means. So God will show you mercy. All those people are like, into, you know, you are you know, fighting, quarreling, beating your wife, disobedient to your husband or to your parents, a sin. I mean, their ways. All those are working for people you don't do the work and you are collecting salary. That's fraud. Or you don't pay those working for you. That is fraud. Repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I will do it no more. Those that give bribe and take bribe and stop money from people because of the uniform, because of the position. They use it to intimidate. They stop. That's sin. Repent and promise God no more. Those into smuggling. Those that are into, you know, taking alcoholic drinks, a white mimbo brukutu, a local gym, one percent to half percent, repent and promise God no more. Don't touch it. Don't uh, drink it. Don't sell it. Don't buy it for people. Don't even work in brewery or in hotel while they're serving those things. And mend your ways. Or maybe you take snuff, you, you know, smoke cigarettes, or in their hemp or cocaine or heroin, by selling it or by buying it. That's your business. My friend, don't give us your money if you're involved in these things. And mend your ways. Repent and promise God no more. I don't know the wickedness I'm into. Now is the acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. Now is the day of salvation. You don't know what will happen in the next minute. Repent now. There is no more time. Jesus is coming. Very soon. Everything is speaking confirming there is no more time. The signs on the ends are everywhere. So take advantage of now and do something before it is too late. All these people that marry and divorce, all the people that are into polygamous marriage, marriage is between a man and a woman until he dead. Do your part. If you have divorced your wife, bring her back, so long as your first wife. If you have divorced your husband, return back to him. If you have a second wife or third wife or fourth wife, pack your load and go. You have no husband. If a man that married them three, remove the second and third one and return your first wife. You don't have right to multiply wife because marriage is the ordination of God and it's between a man and a woman until they do your part. Let's see the Bible. is the institution of the nation of God. No man has rights. It's between a man and a woman and for better for worse until they separate you. If they have not separated you, you have no right. You don't multiply it. I mean, there are ways. We are talking about restitution. Restitution is not only confined on cassettes or those that sold cassettes or bought cassettes if you are damaged people's name, if you are stolen people's property, if you are, you know, married a, strong, a second wife, if you have, you know, uh, you, you divorce your wife, you do restitution by bringing your wife back, taking away the second wife, moving away from that marriage where you are second uh, a wife, and returning to your husband and telling people you damaged their name that you are sorry, just like many people. As, and I'm coming to say sorry for speaking evil against us, selling CD against us, and they're damaging the name of the Lord, working against the spirit that do this work. And they wish the Bible said never forgiveness. Because if you sin against Jesus, against God, Jesus said, 
he will be forgiven. But when you sin against the Holy Ghost, like doing this work, he said you cannot be forgiven. So they need to do something. We see whether anything has happened. God can do and undo. Many people went and were selling this cassette, distributing this cassette, and while they were doing it, everything about them just knocked engine. Yes, I remember the one that gave testimony at Timbuti last, uh, last month. And he said he was carrying the CD and giving people what? Free of charge. While he was giving people CD free of charge, he bought 300 and distributed free of charge. But after he has finished that, doing that, he bought the goods, imported the goods outside the country. When the goods came, he couldn't sell one. Now, listen to me now. He will use that goose, listen very well. He will return that goose and give to somebody free. It will, it, the goose will be good. It will work. It will, if you go to sell it, it will not work. Now, all the whole goose, he distributed it what? Free of charge. No one was sold. That was how a millionaire collapsed. Because he distributed the, the CD what? Free of charge. And God said, you are going to distribute all your money, all your goods, free of charge. And then while he finished distributing, the, he became poor. And then the worst thing that happened to you is, when he's passing on the road and see where they put a flesh, my flesh, my, where my picture is, if he passes on the road, the picture will say, go and do restitution. The picture will open the mouth and talk. He will look like this. He said, ah, what is happening? As anyway, and he, you know, he's not a member of the church, so he was surprised if he passed where they, they put my picture. The picture will open up and said, Go and do the decision. And then he was hearing that he became more confused. Now he joined the choosing and was still not understanding what is happening. Then, while he was that program last month, while he was that program, they said, The voice came again and said, Go and do. Restitution. And in fact, after he has finished distributing that cassette, his business crumbled, his marriage was broken. In fact, the wife told him one day that, that you're under cause. He has from every the house scattered. So many families and Nigerians are suffering because of this cassette CD. Even that is a problem of Nigeria today and many parts of the world. Because when they climb upon church, the whole church is was speaking against us, and then thereby silence the Holy Ghost, and then down they have their problem. Because of envy, they know that we are, they know that God called us, they know that God is with us, but because there's some more to come in here, everybody was ah, we we'll see how to find them, we we'll start to find them fighting against the Holy Ghost. After fighting us, no more, all their roads closed. No headway. Their prayers are not answered. Well, that's not what I'm preaching. All I want to understand is, if you have made a mistake, come and make your way right. Do restitution. God will show you mercy. For me, I don't have anything against anybody. I'm forgiving you. But you, you have to make your way right. So, I don't know that if we have done, the Bible said, all unrighteousness is what? Sin. Look at your Bible. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. No, you not. Verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 I read know you not that unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God and he said be not deceived neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers nor effeminates nor abusers of the self with mankind nor thieves nor covetous no drunkards, no revelers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Are you involved? Repent 
I ask for the mercy of God. I don't know the evil you are into. All these people that are painting their hands, painting their leg, painting their mouth, painting their eyes, and put extra finger, extra nose, attachment, weave on, priming, earrings, bango, jewelry. They make up their body, abomination. God has fearfully and wonderfully made you and marvelous at the works of God. You don't need to make up. Those that bleach their body and become yellow overnight, that's sin. And all those people that dress, they expose their chest, their armpit, their tummy, they expose their nakedness, that is sin. Those dress, expose their body, that's sin. Are you like that? On those people that are, you know, those young men that do Jericho, rough hair, scattered hair, play their hair like a woman, that's sin. You don't need it. I mean, you are ways. My Bible tells me in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30, is that when they are spoiled, what shall they do? Whenever someone is spoiled, you go after painting, after ornament, you need to make up. You don't need those things. It's a mark of those that are spoiled, prostitute. You don't need to do that. I mean, you are ways. Those women that are wearing trousers, abomination, dressed like a man. And if a man dressed like a woman, wearing skirt and blouse, you are an abomination. And such people cannot enter heaven. Look at the Bible, Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. Not to a man put on woman's garments. For all that do so are what? Abomination on the Lord thy God. They are what? Abomination. Those that dress like that. Now, what is the place of abominable people? Revelation chapter 21. Let's read verse 8. Revelation 21, verse 8. Chapter 21, verse 8. But a fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars to have their part in the lake which burn with fire and brings stone, which is the second death. Abominable people shall be cast into hell fire. Liars, fornicators, immoral people, whoremongers, thieves. Are you like that? Repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. All this evil, I will do them no more. Because Proverbs 28, verse 13 says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoso that confess them and forsake them shall have mercy. And the Bible said in Exodus chapter 2, verse 13, because of the mercy of God, it said that when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Which means God has made a provision for the sins that are past. If you will repent, he said there is a blood standing. And then he said, When I see that blood on you, I'll pass over. But in the old testament. It was the blood of animal without blemish. But the blood of animal in the Old Testament does not wash away sin. It covers sin for them. But then it was a symbol of the blood of Jesus which is to come in the New Testament. Because it's only the blood of Jesus that washes away our sins. And if you look at in the book of, let's see, in John chapter 1 verse 29, John chapter 1, verse 29. Let's see the actual blood. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Who is that Lamb? Yes, it, it does not cover sin, but it takes it away, it watches it away. That's what the Bible said in John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's what the Bible said in John chapter 19, verse 30. That when Jesus shed the blood, he said, It is finished. The end of all sacrifice for sin, he said, It is all over. It is finished. That's why the Bible said in John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus did not say, I am a way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So, if you want to reconcile with God, 
You must come to, to the Father through Jesus Christ. And your sins shall be washed away. That's what the Bible said. In John chapter 10, verse 10b, I come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus came to give us what? Eternal life. You receive Jesus, you receive eternal life. And the Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 36, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So he has the key, he has the solution for the remedy of sin. It's only Jesus Christ. No wonder in Matthew chapter 11, 28, Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy ladder, and I will give you rest. So if you can come to the Father through Jesus, your sins shall be washed away. You shall become a new creature. In fact, the Bible said in John chapter 1, verse 12, let's read. John chapter 1, verse 12, but as many as received him, to then gave him power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. If you receive Jesus, power or sonship shall be given to you. You shall become a child of God. That shall be transformation, newness of life. Look at your Bible. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. If any man be in who? Yes. You, he wants to give your life to Jesus. There will be total transformation. The definite change will take place because a new spirit is given to you. Old spirit is destroyed. Adamic nation. The spirit of Jesus Christ comes in. And the grace for righteousness comes in. You become a new creation. So I don't know what they're looking for. God brought to here. He has started the work. He wants you to make sure that you begin to first of all become a child of God by giving your life to Jesus Christ and by stop sinning. That's why in Matthew chapter 6 verse 30 he said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So are you ready to give your life to Jesus? I'm assuring you, once you do it, the work will start and the, the Lord will finish it. Every other thing shall be given to you. Can I hear you say amen to that? Amen. You will go home with salvation, sanctification, Holy Ghost baptism, the fruit and gift of the Spirit, the power of the Most High God, and blessings of healing or deliverance, every kind of blessings shall be your portion in Jesus' name. So as I round up, Romans chapter 10 verse 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Rise up and let us pray. Rise up, search your life, and pray. I mean your ways. Everybody pray. Everybody, everybody. Call upon him. Search your life. Make confession. Repent of your sins. Surrender to Jesus. Today will mark a turning point for you. Today will be a, a beginning of new era, new era, new time. The Lord will walk on you. He will bless you. Open your mouth and pray. Pray, pray with all your heart, with all your being. Pray. Oh Lord, have mercy upon us. No, we are sorry for all unrighteousness, all ungodliness. No, we are sorry for everything committed, known and unknown to us. No, we repent on behalf of ourselves and every member of the church and all the sinners all over the world. We ask for mercy, O God. Forgive and cleanse us and save everyone by your power. Lord, show mercy, O Lord. Mercy, 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 O oh Lord. Lord, show mercy, O oh Lord. Brother, forgive and heal your people. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. Oh Lord, have mercy, have mercy. 
have missed you upon your people, have missed you, Lord. Have missed you upon everyone, have missed you, Lord. I've missed you, Lord. I've missed you, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Father, I am sorry, Lord. Oh, Lord, I am sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Jehovah. Oh Lord, I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Father, oh Lord, I want more time. Sorry, Lord. Jehovah, oh Lord, eyes closed and head bow. If you are truly sorry, just raise your hand up. I want to pray for you. Eyes closed everywhere. The person that is into armed robbery, repent and promise God no more. That person also that is into adultery, don't go into it anymore. Ask for the mercy of God. That person committing masturbation, promise God no more. The person involved in smoking in their hand, taking drugs, promise God no more. That person that is still wearing charm, having charms, repent and promise God no more. And you that is into prostitution, promise God no more. Ask for the mercy of God. And you that patronize the prostitute, ask for mercy. The lady into, you know, abortion, ask for mercy. Don't do it anymore. That person that is into visiting the prostitute, ask for mercy. That person that belongs to secret court, ask for mercy. Don't go back to it. Repent and renounce them. I'm praying for you now. Keep your two hands up. Say this word after me. Almighty God. I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I confess that I am a sinner. I am very sorry for all my sins. Lord, I promise you. I will never continue in them anymore. From today, I confess and I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. He shed his precious blood for me and he was buried. And on the third day, he rose again by justification. Almighty God, use the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash my sins away from my heart. I plead the blood of Jesus from Today, I reject the devil. I reject all his evil. I plead the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my personal Savior. Cancel my name in the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Give me power to sin no more. In Jesus' name I pray. Keep your hands up, sing this song. I surrender. I surrender. Oh, to Jesus, blessed Savior. I Surrender, surrender.
I surrender all to Jesus, blessed Savior, I surrender. One more time. Surrender. I surrender. I surrender, I surrender all, all to Jesus, blessed Savior, I surrender. I Our Father in heaven, I come in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, I present this my beloved brethren before you. Whatsoever they have done, known and unknown to them against you, against humanity. Father, in your wrath, remember me. See. Every yoke of power that makes them to do evil. By your authority, I break that yoke in Jesus' name. Daddy, I plead the blood of Jesus. From this moment, I claim their spirit, their soul, their body for Jesus Christ. But I cancel their name in the book of death. Write their name in the book of life. Give them power to sin no more. In Jesus' name we pray. And I pray for restoration of everyone. I pray for sanctification of your people. Make us pure in Jesus' name. Can I hear you say amen? And it is amen in heaven.